I was the only black girl on the runway. There's the one like token black girl that mm. is allowed to be in the show. You would have to sit backstage at the shows and like sleep on the ground like, yeah. until the show started. Wow. And it was either me or another girl. And if she booked the show, I wouldn't book the show. Jasmine, I feel like everyone knows you as either Jasmine the supermodel mm -hmm. or Jasmine one half of Joja, which yeah. is the activewear brand you have with your best friend, um, Josephine Scriver. Right. But I don't really know Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are you? What, what is your, like, how would you describe yourself aside from those roles? I'm a really sweet girl. I grew up in Orange County, California. I um, love working. So I feel like that's why people mostly know me for my modeling or mm -hmm. Joja. And um, yeah, I keep things like kind of private with my life in I've some noticed. way. I guess when you are playing all these dif different roles, especially also in modeling, I mm -hmm. feel like we get kind of used to coming in as a blank canvas, putting on, you know, the persona and then go with it. Uh, was it difficult for you to kind of find that sense of self away from those things? I don't think so. I think I'm one of the very few people that grew up and always dreamed of becoming a model. Like a lot of my friends that I work with, they're like, oh, I just sort of like fell into it or someone approached me on the street or I won a competition. And for me as a little girl, that was the only thing I was focused on. Like I had no aspirations to be a doctor, or, you know, veterinarian mm -hmm. or anything like that. And my goal was just become a model. And it was specifically Victoria's Secret model that I was just so inspired by like Tyra Banks and mm. Heidi Klum and a lot of the 90s supermodels that I think when I started modeling, it just felt so true to myself. So it really wasn't hard for me to find, I think, myself through modeling. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, completely. You know, you're right. There are a lot of, I was even talking to Tony, um, who I love. And she's like, I just walked down the street and this guy scouted me. And then I just got Calvin Klein. I was yeah. like, okay, like, wow. <laughs> these things are falling out of the sky, which I love. There's a lot of those stories. Yeah. Um, but I love that you just always knew that this is what you wanted to do. Yeah. Um, that's so beautiful. And you started modeling pretty early now. How old were you? I think I did my first job when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And then my mom was like, you need to finish high school and then I can let you go to New York. So I really started modeling probably 17 years old. And I think I read somewhere, I know you were close with your mom yes. and she was very much a protective, you know, person around you when you started in the early modeling days. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's so important because it can be such a tricky industry to be around. Was there like a conversation where she sat you down and was like, okay, this is how... There wasn't a specific conversation, but I think she always raised me to be a strong individual and have like a really strong backbone. Mm -hmm. She raised me as a single mom. So I think just seeing her being so strong and such a great supporter was something that really carried on to me. And, you know, I used to see girls backstage at shows like 14, 15 years old by themselves and they don't know even what's going on. They're being told no every day mm. for the way that they look. And it's just the modeling industry can really like tear you down. And I think if I didn't have my mom there with me, like she would sit backstage at shows with me, travel everywhere with me. Wow. And that's something that I really feel was so special and important to me because it was able to keep me sane and keep my head on straight and not get so bummed out if I didn't book the show that I wanted to do or I didn't book the campaign. She was always like, it's okay, you know, so mm -hmm. your time will come. And I really instilled that in myself and I never let myself get down if I don't get an opportunity that I'm really hoping for. You know, when I started modeling, I left home at like 15, 16. So wow. I had a very different experience than you. And I remember my first trip for modeling was Paris. And you know how they, <laughs> you so know how they you know, <laughs> move around in Paris. Yeah. It was such a reality check for me. It's insane. Oh, my God. I lost every like identity that I thought I had, which at 15, 16, you're still yeah, you figuring it know. out, was completely just, you know, smashed yeah. in front of my face. And it was very difficult. And 
you know, they sell you kind of the idea of you go there and you have the agencies and they take care of you. But, you know, it's a business for them. You're alone. You just kind of, I remember I arrived to the agency and they speak French to me. I don't speak French. They give me the map and they're like, go castings. And I'm like, huh, where do I go? 30 places in one day. Yeah, it's like, here's the metro map. I was like, okay. Yeah, it's Um, wild. I was walking around, lost in Paris for two days, just crying my eyes out. And then I was like, okay, it's time to pull it together. Yeah, it's crazy. It's the presence of someone that you trust and know that they have your best interest, you know, is... I don't think people understand. Like yeah. models build different. It's such a vicious industry, or at least used to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as bad now. I but. feel like now there's m- girls have more voice because of social media. Definitely. Right. Yeah. So I think that people are more careful with how they behave yeah. <laughs> and speak to people. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's been a really nice change, but I'm sure you've seen, like I've seen and experienced a lot of cases of girls just trying to survive. Yeah. It's really insane. And like, I mean, I remember being backstage or not even backstage at shows, but during the casting week before shows, going to all the castings and fittings, and then going to the events to like meet the designers and everything. Like you have to do it all. Mm -hmm. And I would get a call at 4am like, Hey, we need you to come to the fitting for the show. That's tomorrow at 6am. And I'm like, I've had a few glasses of like champagne. I can't do this. And you would have to sit backstage at the shows and like sleep on the ground until the show started. I'm sure it also like knocks the spirit out of you at times when you feel like you're getting pulled in all these different directions. So I see why you decided to kind of safeguard your own self yeah. and just have this persona that shows up, plays her role, and then, and then goes I up. Out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Um, with modeling, something that I don't think people realize is models built differently. Yeah. When you go into 10, 15 castings a day and people are very open to judge you to your face, say no. Um, it's sometimes not say anything. They just stare at you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a hard one to yeah. to get through. You feel like your mother was kind of the force that kept you going, or was it something in you that just like this is we keep going? I think it's a mix of both. I think that she again just like always gave me that power of like it's okay. Mm -hmm. Things are going to be fine. You, you know, your opportunity will come. And I think it was just in me, my determination to be a successful model. Like I was like, there's no way that this can't happen. I need to succeed in this career. So I'm like, if now is not the time and I'm not being booked in this show, like Mm -hmm. next year, I'm going to work even harder and, you know, find a way to do it, meet the right person. And, um, just like sort of break down those walls. I mean, when I was walking shows, which was like 10 years ago, I was the only black girl on the runway, which was pretty insane. And it was either me or another girl. And if she booked the show, I wouldn't book the show. So that was a crazy thing to also experience of like, there's the one like token black girl that Mm. is allowed to be in the show, which now thank God it's so different these days. But that was also hard to be like, oh, well, you know, she's doing it. So I can't. That's, you see, that's a whole other experience of its own to just feel the unfairness of it all. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of you. You you did a lot. <laughs> you broke so many, you know, barriers. Um, and I don't think people realize, this is why I really wanted to talk to you because I feel like I'm sure you have so many stories and so many lessons that you've learned throughout mm-hmm. the years about yourself. Yeah. What are some of those lessons that the modeling just emphasized in you that you weren't aware? Like it's true, like if you work hard that you can succeed at whatever you want to do. And there's so many times where I could have like given up modeling, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I've been doing this for like 15 years now. So I think I've been told no so many times or been up for so many campaigns, it doesn't happen or a beauty contract doesn't happen. And I'm ever since I was younger, I'm like, just keep going. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I would not have had that in my mind, I would have not been where I am today. So I think that's something I really learned. Like even going into business now, I'm like, you know, we have ups and downs, but if you keep going, you'll succeed. And I mean, having a brand is his own 
humbling a, experience. Yeah, and how long have you had Joja now? We launched two years ago, but we've like been building a community for six years prior to the brand. So tell me what pushed you to to start this? Well, I think I've always had a very entrepreneurial spirit. Ever since I was younger, I've loved beauty and fashion. And I always thought, okay, maybe I'll start a beauty brand one day. But for some reason, fitness just came so natural to me. Josephine and I would work out every day. And a lot of people really loved watching our fitness journey throughout Victoria's Secret. Mm. And it just became this hot topic of a lot of people think models don't work out or they're just born this way. And, you know, that whole stigma around models. So we would start to post our workouts. People started to catch on and eventually they were asking, what clothes are you wearing? You know, I love your set. What are you wearing? And we're like, hmm, this could be an interesting project for us to work on. And it just came so natural to us. We both loved fitness and we also love fashion. So we're like, how can we combine fitness and fashion Mm. and make something kind of unique and cool? So then we just started on that journey. And when we first started, we almost partnered with someone who was about to take like half of our business. And then COVID hit. And we were like, wait, we can actually really do this on our own. So let's just pick up the phone, call people. That's a blessing in disguise. Because I think that when you start a project, you always think, oh, there's somebody who knows how to do it with more expertise. Let's just give it away. And then you obviously run into so many blocks uh, on the road. So that's amazing that you have the opportunity, I mean, COVID, to kind of step back and be like, we'll do it ourselves. But being an entrepreneur is is a very humbling experience. Yeah. Um, I've had, I remember when we started our kind of e-commerce business and a brand, I also decided, okay, I want to do everything. I want to learn every single detail to be able to kind of control the process. And it was such a difficult journey because at first it started very easy because you already have the audience and yeah. the audience is asking and interested. But then the behind the scenes of everything, the production, the logistics, that really made me sit down at some point and say, you know what? It's I'm not built for this. I'm going to let someone else do this. Yeah. And just kind of closed it and, you know, celebrated my first big failure and mm. loved it. But I'm sure you've encountered enough experiences throughout building Joja that you're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's real. (laughs) It's really crazy. Like I never knew owning your business had so many ups and downs. Like it is insane. Every day I think, okay, we're going to have a great day. Something happens with the factory, you know, like it's just never ending. And I've worn so many hats within the company. I was just like you're saying, like you wanted to learn every aspect so that you can control it. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of the same way. In that, I'm like, I want to learn everything. I want to know what everyone's doing, even down to being the customer service person. Like I've, people email like so upset, not now, but like when we first started, so Mm -hmm. upset, like, where's my order? And I'm like, do you know that it's me talking to you? Like, if you knew, you probably wouldn't be this mean. And I I would write back like, don't worry, your order's coming soon. And they would have no idea that it was me. So like even doing that, it's just like, it's really stressful. And then dealing with factories, them being laid on their deadlines and Mm. you having to shift your focus of, you know, your collections and your drops. It is insane. And now Joe and I have gotten to the point where like, okay, we've succeeded as far as we can with the things that we know we're good at, but now we know that we need help in those areas and start hiring people. Cause it's still just me, Josephine, um, a woman on our social team and Mm. an advisor. It's very small. So you're starting the hiring process. Yeah. And Which is going to be a fun oof. ride on its own. Because I'm not excited. <laughs> I hear from every business owner, it's the hardest thing to do. Operations, I think, training people, um, learning. It's it's literally like you're getting a psychology degree Ugh. because you need to know how to balance all these personalities. You know, get what you need from them, um, and it's then you're starting building a company culture. Yeah, <laughs> we'll revisit so this conversation <laughs> next year. Yeah, I um, know. But it's like, it's come a point where, like you're saying, we've gotten it as far as we can. Yeah. And off of the community that we have, it's like, now how do we take it to the next level and catch the people that have never heard of Jojo or Jasmine or Josephine? And that's the hardest part. Yeah. 
the awareness and kind of brand positioning, what is kind of your vision for Joja? Like if you can look at it in five years, where would you want it to be? I mean, I would love to just be known as one of the top active wear brands mm. up with some of the other ones that I see everyone wearing. I'm like, oh, I just want to be, you know, one of those brands that's there. Um, I think having a really sh- like strong, small, but like beautiful team would be amazing, um, which I know is hard. And but you um, can do hard things. Yeah, but totally can do hard things. And I would love to have Joja have like a brick and mortar store. I think that would be awesome. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm very excited. Yeah, I, I have see to send you, you some products. Yes, <laughs> please do. We I were love. actually on this Chanel trip together. Yeah. And I was like, Jasmine, why didn't you send everyone Georgia? <laughs> we were working out. But, you know, I see you working hard, like in between the itinerary, you were shooting content and you were, and it's amazing to see that like you have the passion and you have the drive and you obviously are following kind of the vision that you have for the brand. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see how this is all going to evolve for you. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot of lessons. A lot. That's part of this journey, which is exciting. And you've also had a very um, transformative couple of years because you became a mother. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful baby girl, Mia Victoria. Right. And she's, she already turned one. First year is the most challenging. Yeah. At least for me, it was. How has it been for you, the motherhood? It's been so much fun. I've learned a lot. I think the first four months were probably the hardest just because I'm the kind of person that doesn't like to just sit at home. Like I like to be doing things and moving and learning and working. And so that was really hard for me to be like, relax. You need to stay home focus on the baby, focus on yourself, you know, get yourself in the right mindset to even be able to jump back into work. So that was really Mm -hmm. tough on me. And then once I was able to, I have my mom who lives really close by to me. So she was able to come in and help a little bit. And we were fortunate enough to be able to hire someone to come and help us. So now I feel like I've been able to sort of get back to myself a little bit more, which was really a mind like struggle for me. In what way? It's just like, I felt like I was pulling myself one way of wanting to like work and then pulling myself the other way of just like, I want to stay home with the baby. Mm. And I didn't, I couldn't figure out what felt right at the time. Honestly, from experience, I feel like we, I mean, I personally go into those moments every couple of months, just Mm -hmm. being like, where where am I needed more? Yeah. What do I want? Because, you know, sometimes I want to be baking sourdough bread and taking care of the kids. And then other seasons in my life, I'm just like, it's time to push. It's time yeah. to do the work. And I, it's kind of like a never ending thing. Um, have you learned, because it took me a few years to learn to give myself grace. Are you there yet? Or is it still in the in the works? I feel like I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm there. Okay, because we can be very hard on ourselves. Yeah, I try to never be hard on myself. So I think like, yeah, I think I'm there. (laughs) Beautiful. How long did it take you? I mean, I feel like my eldest is 10 years old. Wow. Like last year. No, (laughs) (laughs) No, it was honestly, it was waves because I think that, you know, I've also changed so much. I mean, I became a mother. I was 22. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was kind of growing up with Jake, yeah, my that's, first. Yeah, it's really young. So it was a lot. And then my second was 23. Mm-hmm. And then Maximus is, I was 28. So it was very different moments in my life. Yeah. Um, with Maximus, I felt like after I gave birth, I was in such a like girl boss era um, and I hate to admit it, but it was the worst thing ever. I was just so eager to go back mm-hmm. to prove to the world and to myself, look, like back. exactly, look yeah. what women can do. We can do it all. And yeah. I burned myself out so bad that it took me solid two years to get back to myself. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Because I was just emotionally ran myself to the ground. Um, and then once you realize that you have the burnout, you then have to 
deal with the guilt, mm-hmm. you know, of what, oh, I should have done that. Yeah. So it's just like a... It's so hard. It's such a challenge. A roller coaster of emotions. You know, I love my meal kits. As an entrepreneur and a mother of three, I don't always have the time to create balanced and delicious meals for my family and I. In comes Home Chef. These are effortless chef design recipes that are conveniently delivered to your doorstep to simplify the cooking experience. Whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions or speedy recipes ready in less than 30 minutes, maybe you like oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients or a quick microwave meals that assembles in minutes. Home Chef has you and your family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. Home Chef has over 30 options a week and serves a variety of dietary needs so you don't have to worry about what to make ahead of time. And it's not only convenient, it's also economical. Home Chef customers save an average of $86 per month on groceries. I got my order in and I'm so excited to try the sesame crusted salmon that I picked, but I will keep you posted about which meals are my favorite. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering my listeners 18 free meals plus free shipping on your first box and free dessert for life at homechef.com slash Valeria. That's homechef.com slash Valeria for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. Homechef.com slash Valeria, V-A-L-E-R-I-A. Reminder, you must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. I really love that your mother is near you. I yes. think that's that's so powerful. It's so helpful. You have other family around or just your mom? So out here I have my mom and my grandma oh. and my grandpa. Amazing. It's a tight, small family. Do you see yourself um, the way the parent, the way you mother? Do you see like the resemblance with the way you grew up? I would. Yeah, I think so. I feel like I parent my daughter in a very similar way that I was raised. Yeah. I've never thought about that. But yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, because we always like, oh, we're going to do it differently, even if it's good or bad, just like updated version. Yeah. But then you start like, oh, this is... I'm just uh, replaying what I've experienced. Yeah. What are or some like I learn now, like the reasons why my mom did something. I'm mm. like, okay, I get it. I get it. I know. Yeah. The dots are connected. Yeah, it's all connecting. <laughs> what do you feel like you, how are you similar to your mom in that regard? Um, I think my mom, when she raised me, was very disciplined. Yeah, I think that's the one way that like really could stand out to me is like how it was pretty like structured and disciplined and we were very close. She had me when she was 17. Wow. So we were like this. So I could just see myself being, being like that close with my daughter, which I think would be really sweet. That's beautiful. 17. That's young. I mean, my mom, it it was different times. My mom had me at 19. Yeah. So it's such a different experience to grow up together than to like, you know, have a adult parent. Totally. Have you ever had a conversation with her of just like, how was it for you, you know, like for her as a teenage mom? Yeah, I think we have talked about it a little bit. Luckily, she had her mom there with her too. So Mm -hmm. I grew up with basically both of them and she was able to lean on my grandma a lot because she was doing fashion styling her whole life. So she was out working and I would stay with my grandma and it was just like a really nice balance. And I felt really close to both of them, Mm. which was nice, but it was also great to see how hard she worked, which I think is what I sort of learned from her of just like, got to get out there and do it. It's funny because as you speak and I couldn't like put a finger on what makes you so unique and now I get it. You were raised by a very strong mother figure, but Mm -hmm. also like a grandmother. And I feel that that like strong feminine grounding Mm -hmm. sense about you, you totally have it. Yeah. I think it definitely comes from that. So beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't grow up with a father? No. Same. Mm -hmm. Do you have daddy issues? I don't think so. And a lot of my friends are always like, I don't understand how Jasmine doesn't have daddy issues. <laughs> like, I don't know either. Maybe they'll show up later. <laughs> Maybe. Because for the longest time, Maybe. I was like, I'm good. Yeah. My mother like covered all grounds. Yeah. That's how I feel. I'm like, I always think about it. I'm like, no, I don't think I do. Time will tell. <laughs> we'll I love see. it. I'm but like, you thought about it. You were sitting yeah, there. Yeah, I've thought about home. it many times. I'm just like, hmm. Like, I, I, yeah, it's funny. 
<laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun one. Yeah, um, we'll see how that pans out for me. Have you ever thought about your father, or like, yeah, if you ever, do you, yeah, have I you ever do, met him? Yeah, yeah. When oh. I was younger, I would say probably up until I was maybe six years old, I think. Like, I would go visit him in the summer. He lives yeah. in Atlanta, so I would go and visit, spend the summers there, and then once I came to a certain age and I un- sort of understood a little bit more about life and sort of the balance between them, I just made my own decision of, you know, sticking with my mom and um, that side of my family, their values are a little different than mine. Mm. And um, yeah, so that's kind of how our falling out went a little bit. I think it's important to know your boundaries when it totally. comes to family because you know blood is great but there's mm-hmm. so many different aspects to like you know having those people to be part of your life totally so that's a beautiful lesson yeah. um i feel like there's also like so much peace within my life like with my mm-hmm. with my mom and my grandma like it's just so calm and whenever that side of the family would sort of enter into our world it would just become really hectic and stressful and i'm just like whew. Mm-hmm. Not the energy I want to have around me. I met my biological father for the first time like five years ago. Oh my gosh. I've never seen him. What? Whenever I asked my mom about him, she would pull a couple of photos and she cut them in half. So I never actually knew how it looked <laughs> like. And for me, wow. yeah, we decided to, my mom decided to go to Russia to visit my uh, grandmother's grave. And she said, let's go, let's go and let's, maybe you'll get to meet your biological father. And I was very much like, I don't need to, like, there's no, there's nothing for me to explore there. But uh, thankfully, Gary, my husband was like, you know what, just go, you never know. It might, one day you want and it would be too late, just do it. So I remember making that trip and It was very, it was like exposure therapy. I'm sure. (laughs) It brought up all the things. And I remember just when I finally met him, there wasn't any like baggages or emotions or anything I needed to sort through. It was just kind of like a nice, peaceful, like, you know. A little closure. Closure, yeah. Without actually hashing things out. It's just like I saw his face. I'm like, Is there, are there any family uh, diseases I should know about? <laughs> and I was like, thank you for your service and your sperm donation. Yeah. And, you know, God bless. It was very, That's like, clean. Wild. Yeah. Oh, my So gosh. it's always interesting to kind of um, see how people navigate those family things. Totally. And you mentioned your mother has been in, she was been a celebrity stylist mm-hmm. for a long time. Yeah. And you work together. Yeah. How- she does all my styling. Which is so fun and so easy. I don't think I've ever worked with any other stylist unless, of course, I'm on a set Mm. shooting. Um, But it's so fun because she knows my style so well. Can like collaborate together and just we're texting all the time. So it's just so nice. That's so nice. Was there any or ever a moment where you were like, I want to try this identity on? And she's like, "Mm -mm." no, I think I have a really classic and sort of timeless style and I've always been that way. Mm-hmm. And for I don't know where it's come from. I don't know if it's from my mom saying something to me years ago, but I've always had this thing where I'm super against trends for myself because mm-hmm. I feel like I want to be able to have my career and never look back and be like, what? was I thinking. So now those Vogue videos where you're like, this is when... Exactly. I'm like, I don't want to do one of those videos because I want to feel like I remain classic and timeless throughout my whole career. So we Mm -hmm. both have that classic and timeless style. So sometimes even, I don't know if I see a dress on a rack and maybe it's a little bit more out there, but not too crazy. Mm -hmm. She'll be like, what are you thinking? But I always bring it back to my... So if you had to define like four words or three words to kind of Mm -hmm. define your style, what would it be? I would say elegant, timeless, comfortable, and chic. Love it. That's exactly (laughs) what I'm getting. That's what I hope I (laughs) exude to people. (laughs) Um, I love your presence on social media because you kind of moved away uh, from being this, you know, the girl in the magazines to start building your own personal brand and putting yourself out there. So first of all, how has it been for you to kind of move to that platform? Strange. 
You know, really? I'm so used to just showing up to set, taking the photos and that's it. And just posting whatever I want on social media mm-hmm. where now I've sort of in really enjoyed figuring out what my sort of aesthetic or vibe is on my social. Because as a model back in the day, you run around with a you know, portfolio yeah. and go to all the castings where now people look at your Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I try to really gear my page towards you know, what's really true to me, the brands that I really like, show my personality a little bit more like on TikTok because I don't it, get to do that often. Been weird? I don't mind being in front of the camera. Like I feel like when a camera's on, I can just turn into someone else. And I think that just comes from modeling of knowing how to turn into this character. Mm-hmm. So that part hasn't been weird. I think it's just having to adapt to all these different platforms all the time and figure out your voice on each platform is crazy. And I feel like you're getting, it's even crazier when you're doing it on in such a public forum, right? Because yeah. everyone has something to say. Everyone has a little input. And, and everyone's you're like, really like ballsy now and they are not scared to say things. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, very easy, right? When you're behind the screen. So yeah. that's also, you know, it's intimidating. Yeah. Especially when you're used to kind of hide behind a whole, you know, team of um, stylists and photographers and all the things like you don't have to show up as yourself. Totally. And I think even speaking about team, I have, you know, modeling managers and social media managers and then sort of like PR type of managers. They all want me to post and do certain kinds of things. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, whoa, guys, like, (laughs) let me just focus on what I want to do and what feels true to me. Because it's so easy to like, look fake on social media and put on this like fake persona and people can read through that. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like is your kind of strategy? Like, where do you want it to go? I want it to always remain clear that I am a model. I think that that's one thing that a lot of models have somewhat lost with this whole shift with social media. Like, I feel like a lot of them have just turned into full-blown influencers. And that's Mm -hmm. really scary to me because modeling is what got me here. And modeling is something that's still really important to me. So I think the way I do my content, it kind of everything I do almost has to look like an editorial if I'm shooting a product or I just can't go so far to like posting every brand in the world. Right. So that's like, that's really tricky. But then there is that side where influencing is such a popular thing now. And I think it would be dumb of me not to like mold into that a little bit. Because you, I think it's really important to like keep changing with the times and not hold yourself back and be like, oh, I'm not going to do that because, you know, it doesn't fit me. It's just like find a way to do it that like authentic to uh, yeah, you. Yeah, that is authentic to me. I actually love um, and I see I see that strategy when I look at your social media. I see that like you're not too relatable which is good. You know, you want to be aspirational. Yeah. Um, and you have that like good balance. Yeah. People can see your personality. They can connect to it. But you're like, we're, I, I'm here. It's like, hard we're not though. to, but that's important. Like yeah. to your point, keeping that, you know, the modeling DNA. Yeah. That makes total sense. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really cool. Now that I have like words to it, I couldn't figure out. I'm like, where is this going? Like, what is it going to evolve to? There was one video on your TikTok where I was like, this. She's like, she's (laughs) on some, she's onto something. Cause I saw the reactions to that video. Do you know which one I'm referring to? Okay. So it was the video where you were showing the beauty products and you're Mm -hmm. like, this one is for us. Oh yes. Yeah. That one yeah. gave me chills. Really? Yeah. Oh. It was so beautiful to see uh, your community, like the way people were reacting yeah. to it. You know, you showed beauty products that are geared for like darker girls. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I don't know, like I'm I'm such a geek when it comes to like social media and content. And I really, you know, love to see the psychology behind everything. So yeah. when I was going through the comments and just how people reacted to it, I was like, oh. This is so powerful. Yeah, I'm, that was really cool because I didn't think it would. I mean, I saw another girl do it and a friend of mine was like, oh my God, you should totally do this. People love to learn like what you use. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then it blew up and it was really sweet to see girls, you know, be like, oh, finally something that I can use. And because I feel like, I don't know, you don't really see that often where people really want to like share and be like, so open about the products that they're using. And 
Yeah, I thought it was cute and really fun. It was really beautiful. And I mean, I've seen you in so many beauty ads, but it felt different. It felt so personal. It felt so like real. Um, I don't even think you understand the impact it had. (laughs) Because I'm, you know, I'm not even your skin tone. I was like, oh, yes, (laughs) this is so beautiful. (laughs) Um, But I think that's what's nice too about TikTok is being able to, it's just such a different community. And the way mm -hmm. people talk on there is so different than Instagram. Like Instagram, is people are just so quick to be like, oh my God, I love it. But on TikTok, I feel like they really feel like they know you or can get to know you because I'm giving a different side of myself that I don't normally give. Do you feel like you would be opening up more or you kind of reached your capacity of how much you're willing to share? I think I would open it more. Everyone's asking me to get back on YouTube and I'm like, so hard. Oh my goodness, be careful. You're going to turn into an influencer. (laughs) I I used to do YouTube for such a long time and then it just got so overwhelming always having the camera and you know I yeah it was just crazy it can rob moments of your life if you're not careful and I think that's that balance especially when you have responsibility to you know your husband and Mm -hmm. your kids it's it's a tricky one because it's, it's exciting, you know, mm-hmm. and you want to build a community and you want to show them love. But there's also you live in kind of like two worlds in a way. Mm-hmm. How does your husband like this whole social media thing? He's really private, mm-hmm. um, but he works at Snapchat. So he obviously understands a lot of the tech world and social media and how it works. He is very supportive with anything that I do. But um, when it comes to like him being on social media or our daughter being on social media, he's just like, keep, keep us out of it. I mean, I think that's great. And that yeah. gives you your moment to, you know, showcase only what you're about and what's yeah. interesting to you. Um, so that's really fun. Um, yeah. I love when you share your travel content. You travel a lot. It's a, so do you. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you're, you travel way more. I'm like, how is she not so jet lagged? And how do you keep up with? I don't. <laughs> I'm just exhausted every single day. Everyone's like, Jasmine, how do you do it? How do you keep going? I'm like, I don't. I'm just running on empty <laughs> all the time. So how do you like fill your cup? You know, like what's, what makes you feel rejuvenated again? Honestly, being home. Mm. Like I, love being home, spending time with my family, putting my phone away and just relaxing or watching senseless TV where I don't have to think. Or what like, is some senseless TV you like to watch? Just like reality TV shows. I love Housewives. You know, I've never watched Housewives. What? Yeah. Oh my I'm gosh. I'm so not. I I love it. And Or like Vanderpump Rules. Oh, that's a, that's isn't a it one. like a, it's a c- iconic. Yeah. It's a, good it's a one. very LA landmark, yeah. no? Yeah. But <sighs> I don't get much I time. Have. I mean, I can't remember the last time I watched TV, but like once I get, when I get really overwhelmed and like traveling a lot, I'm like, okay, I just need to sit down and be with my husband or we go for like a date night and do something that's just relaxing because mm-hmm. I can really push myself as like far and I won't stop. And I'm like, "Ah, wait, you know, take a step back. And it's really important. What's like a trigger for you? Is it a physical feeling or is Um, it like mental? It's a mental feeling where I just feel so overwhelmed of things just stacking and stacking and stacking that I just feel myself start to like spiral a little bit. And Mm. before I get to that spiral, I catch it luckily. So I'm able to reel it in and take a moment. You Do you have any hobbies? Um, Like random stuff that you like to do? Except vendor pump. <laughs> <laughs> what do I love to do? Well, I'm learning Spanish. Oh, which is fun. Uh, My husband's from Ecuador, so that's a little. How's side that going thing. for you? It's good. <laughs> it's hard. I can understand. Like, I feel like eighty percent of what people say in a conversation. That's amazing. But it's so hard to speak it. Before we moved to Miami, I was learning French because oh, wow. I was French in my previous life, uh-huh. and I just need to catch up with yeah. her. But then we moved to Miami and I've realized that French will get me nowhere. And (laughs) Duolingo is blowing up my phone. Like I've been ignoring the, I'm not doing well there. Yeah. I used to go to a class like three times a week for Spanish. And then when I started Joja, it just got really crazy and hectic. So then I started doing online classes and now I haven't taken a class in probably like 
three months, but I need to get back but on it. But the intention it. is there. Yeah, it's there. Also, your husband speaks Spanish, so I feel like, you know, you can be just only Spanish from now on. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, you, He's you get like, what you so, get. so when are you going to start your Spanish again? I'm like, it's coming. Let me just get a few things in line and then I can start. Is there any tools or apps or anything in your life that you feel like is helping you to like stay on track or just, you know, being on top of your life? You know what? The aura ring I just started wearing. It's the best. Like when I put this on, maybe two weeks ago, and I'm obsessed. Like I always knew that I was a bad sleeper and that I need to get more sleep. But now I'm like, girl. Get get to bed. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing too much. The stress one I know. is wild. Welcome to the club. Um, like I maybe am, I need to start meditating now. <laughs> yes, start crazy. meditating. And I love that it tracks your cycle. I don't know if you've yeah. been using that. Yeah, I just input my information. Oh my God. This is this is probably the best like wellness app that I've ever used. So I'm a full yeah, ordering. I have been loving it. And I never thought I would. The only thing is, is like I stopped drinking mm-hmm. and I stopped seeing friends. Because <laughs> I'm like, mm, race, sorry, go. I, I need to start winding down. <laughs> I know. But you kind of find a balance to yeah. it for sure. Yeah. Um, is there any quotes? I always, I'm always very curious if there's any kind of words that oh. stick with people. I always tell myself, work hard, play harder. <laughs> That's like my That's mantra <laughs> in my head every day. <laughs> like, it's all going to be worth it. I and love then, it. Yeah. Jasmine, thank you so much for thank being you. here and for opening up. I feel like I know you yeah. better now. You see, oh, this is what I was waiting for. <laughs> like, we need to. Aww. That's awesome. Thank you. Aww, I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't miss my newest episode right here. And if you're listening to the podcast on Apple or Spotify, please go and leave a review with your biggest takeaway. I love reading your thoughts. And if you have any suggestions for guests or topics, you can leave them in the comment section. And always, always remember, you are not alone.